Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the gun guy. And yes, I do have one of my chickens. Uh, she popped right up here like she wanted to be in the video, so I figured we'd give her, you know, her uh, her few seconds of fame here and uh, and let her be on the YouTube channel. <laughs> has nothing to do with guns, does it? All right, there you go, girl. Okay, off you go. All right, there you go. There's the, uh, the brief, uh, the only time I ever have guests on my show. There you go. What I wanted to mention to you today was the idea of a battery of guns, because I do talk about that from time to time, and I think it's important for us to recognize what that is. So I thought I would explain it to you. I'm not a gun collector, per se, uh, but I do have a battery of guns, because in my opinion, we need to have guns that we can use uh, for certain purposes, and they're working guns. So for example, in my battery of guns, and, and my theory of the battery of guns, a person ought to have a defensive handgun, like this Glock. I've got this Glock right here. And that way, you've got a handgun to defend yourself if you have to. It's, not very, it's pretty worthless for hunting, but for self-defense, it's a really good tool. A person ought to have, perhaps, a defensive rifle, and that's why I have this Sega rifle here. This is my defensive rifle. And I live in California, so I have to make sure that my rifle and my handgun are California compliant, and both of them are. I might also like to have a defensive shotgun, and I've got that one here, this Mossberg 500. And I might also like to have some hunting guns, some things I can hunt with in case I choose to do that. Now I've got, uh, for example, I suggest a person have a hunting shotgun. Now I've got my Mossberg, and what I like about it is it has interchangeable barrels, so I have a short barrel for self-defense, but I have a long barrel with interchangeable chokes that I can use for hunting. So I can use that for bird hunting if I want to. And if I really wanted to, they make a barrel I could shoot uh, shotgun slugs out of with a, with a scope, reach out there about 200 yards, and I could hunt larger game with that if I wanted to just use my shotgun for that. Now, I might also want to have a gun to hunt small game. For example, I've got a 22 rifle here. Now, my, my, I've always opted for the, the Marlin Model 60 because I really like them. Some people like the 1022. Some people like other 22 rifles. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you like it, that it's accurate, you enjoy shooting it, and it's something you could take small game with if you needed to. Rabbits, squirrels, that sort of thing. And then a 22 pistol is really a good thing to have for a couple of reasons. One, it allows you uh, some inexpensive practice with handgun shooting particularly if you're not wealthy and you don't have a ton of money and you'd like to practice a little bit, you can do so less expensively most of the time with 22s than you can center fires. The other thing is it gives you a smaller gun that can be very accurate that you can still hunt with, but at the same time maybe be a little less conspicuous that you, than you would be carting a rifle around. And then if you wanted to hunt larger game, deer or whatever, and maybe your choice of a defensive rifle is something with a smaller caliber, like an AR-15, you may not want to hunt deer with that or hogs with that or something. And if you're in an area where you can hunt, you might want to get yourself a 30 caliber or, uh, or suitable deer rifle. Now, this is an example, and the reason why I brought this Mosin Nagant out is because, you know, not everybody's got a ton of money to spend on guns, and sometimes we're doing that on a budget. I'm not a wealthy man financially. I consider myself wealthy because my, my God loves me, my wife loves me, my children love me, and I eat every day, and I have a home to live in, and we're actually on my property uh, in the Grove here. So I feel very blessed, but I'm not wealthy. I don't have a ton of money to spend on stuff, and I don't have a ton of stuff. And as a result, my battery of guns is fairly simple. Now, I bought this because I wanted to go deer hunting, and I don't have $700, a thousand dollars to spend on a deer rifle. I bought this Mosin Nagant, and you know what I discovered? It's a really good hunting rifle, and with iron sights, I can I can shoot fairly well with it out to about 150 yards, which is about as close as I'm going to shoot at anything anyway. So for me, it works really well. I just put some sight paint on the sights so I could see them better, and I've had uh, I've had no problem at all hunting with it. It's a little heavy. But good grief, it's the Russian equivalent of a 30 6 so I can hunt anything in North America with this thing and be fairly successful with it, as long as I don't have to make really, really long shots. So there's my battery of guns. This is my battery of guns. This is my 30 caliber hunting rifle. This is my defensive rifle, my Sega. This is my defensive shotgun and my hunting shotgun, my Mossberg 500, and I've uh, shot just about every kind of bird known to man, ducks, uh, I mean, you know, pheasant, quail, chucker, uh, you name it, I've put them in the pot with this particular gun. I've hunted with it for many, 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 many years. And my little 22 rifle, which is outstanding at putting rabbits and squirrels and other small game in the pot, and it's been used for that, and it's got a little Weaver four-power scope on it, and it's just ridiculously accurate, and it's a great little rifle. And now you might like a different brand, but nevertheless, that gives me my 
my little battery of guns. I've got my defensive handgun here, and I've got my, my, uh, my little hunting handgun, my practice handgun. My defensive handgun I've got, for example, here is the Glock, a little Glock 40. And the uh, 22 example I've got is the, uh, the Ruger model uh, Mark III. Now, look, there's a variety of different guns. You may not like one brand or the other. You may be a revolver person. When my dad got older before he passed away, he just didn't want to buy a bunch of different kinds of ammunition. So he had a 22 rifle, he had a Remington 870, and he had a, uh, a, uh, a defensive rifle that was a Marlin lever action in, 30, in uh, 357 Magnum. He had a revolver in 357 Magnum, it was a Ruger SP-101. And he had a smaller little two-shot Derringer that he had in 38 Special. So he was kind of limited, but he wasn't going to do much hunting. And he was living up in Oregon, and it was kind of his way of making sure that he had guns that could operate for him if he ever needed it. And that way, he was fairly prepared. Now, why do I show you all this? And by the way, I will tell you, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you there's one gun missing from this that you might want to buy and that I'm going to buy. And I'll explain to you what it is when we get to the end. But one of the reasons I mention this to you is because I, I get uh, messages from people a lot asking me questions like, gee, I live in the city, what kind of guns should I have in case of civil unrest or a natural disaster or something goes high, sideways and I need to be able to protect myself and feed my family and so on. I'll get the same uh, message from people who live out in the country and they want to know the same things. Depending on where you live and what you're trying to do, your battery of guns is going to look different. It's also going to look different because of perhaps your particular preference where firearms is con are concerned. But I wanted to give you sort of a broad brush approach here. I live in, an, er, in a kind of a suburban setting where I'm probably not in a survival situation. I'm not going to have anything bigger than small game to hunt. So there's no real, real reason other than personal preference, because I like to hunt, to have a 30 caliber rifle for me. The 22 is the one that I would be using to hunt most of the time. Um, you know, self-defense rifle, this Sega is outstanding, an AR-15 is outstanding, a Mini-14 is outstanding. They're all great guns. They're all going to work well for you. It, a lot of it depends on where you live and what the restrictions are where firearms are concerned where you live. If you live in, an, in a real urban environment, you may not need a rifle at all. A shotgun might be perfect for you for self-defense because you're going to be defending yourself at such short distances that you might not even want a rifle. And with the overpenetration, you might not want to injure people you don't intend to defend yourself against. But you surely are going to want a small caliber uh, gun like a 22. Likewise, if you're in a situation where you might have to leave your home briefly to go get supplies during a situation like that, let's say that the water has run out and FEMA has shown up and they're giving people water and so on, you're not going to be able to walk up to that truck with a rifle. But you might be able to do it with a well-concealed defensive handgun so that on your way home, somebody doesn't attack you and take your water or take your little bit of supplies. Which brings up a different subject. I talk to preppers periodically because they send me emails and so on, and a lot of them are, uh, are not gun preppers, they're food and water preppers. And we need to be a little bit of both, because here's the reality of it. If you've prepared and you've got plenty of water and you've got plenty of food to last you during any natural disaster or emergency, but you have no way to defend those supplies, then you're going to find out very quickly that, unfortunately, people, when they don't have food and they don't have water, aren't people anymore. I mean, they're human beings, but they don't behave like human beings anymore. The truth is, they behave like hungry, thirsty animals, and they will take whatever they need. And so if you have no way of defending the supplies you have, you're going to lose your supplies, and you very well may lose your life. So it's important that if you can, wherever you live, you have some ability to defend those things from marauders or people who may want to try to take them. And uh, sometimes those can be people you knew before who are no inter not interested in being your friends anymore. So it might be good for you to encourage your friends to be prepared too so they don't turn out to be your enemies. Now I did mention there was one gun that is not here that I'm going to get and I wanted to mention it to you and that is a high quality hunting air, air rifle. Something that is designed to hunt, that shoots uh, uh, maybe a, uh, a really uh, accurate pellet that you can hunt with quietly. Because if you live as I do in an area where there are other homes, and maybe there's a little distance between you, but a gun goes off, everybody hears it. The pellet gun goes off, that's fairly quiet. It's got a little sound to it, but not much. 
Um, and you can take a small bird like a dove with it. You can take a rabbit with it. You can do all kinds of things with that gun, and you're not going to attract a lot of unwanted attention in the process. Now, that's the one gun that isn't here that I would encourage you, and I'm going to add personally, uh, to my battery of guns. And so that you know, uh, I encourage my friends to have a battery of guns. I encourage my family members, all of them, to have a battery of guns, whatever fits their particular lifestyle and where they live. And you're going to find out that probably yours is going to be very different from mine, and that's not particularly important. What's important is, does it fit your budget, do you like it, and does it fit where you live and how you live? So there you are. There's my discussion on batteries of guns. And so when you hear me in videos talking about a battery of guns, now you know what I'm talking about. It's the working guns that you might need, maybe on a daily basis if you live out in a rural area and you hunt a lot, uh, or, or you have a barn and you need to have a little 22 pistol because you're out on your property and you go to an outbuilding and you want to deal with the rats and varmints that happen to be around there. You know, that's a working gun. Otherwise, they might just be guns that you have and you practice with and shoot with in case there's an emergency. You know, on my property, we have lots of water, we have plenty of food, we have an gen emergency generator and a way to hook it up to the house without having to run cords all over the place. We're fairly well prepared, and you know, some of my neighbors are too. But if we don't have a way to defend that against people who might come into our area and, have, and who have nothing, then we're in deep trouble. That way we can choose to help them if we can without hurting ourselves, and if we wish to, we won't be forced to because we have no way to fight back. Anyway, there it is, the battery of guns. Now look, if you haven't, if you like my videos or you like gun videos at all, I want to encourage you to support the National Rifle Association right now. So I'm going to put a link right here so you can do that. They desperately need your membership. We're fighting for our Second Amendment rights so we can have a battery of guns and we can actually defend ourselves. I guarantee you in a natural disaster, the government's not going to be there to help you for quite some time. So you're kind of on your own. The NRA is constantly fighting for your rights to be able to have an ability to protect yourself in such situations or just because you're home and somebody's trying to break in or because you'd like to carry a gun for self-defense on a daily basis. So please click on the link. It'll save you some money and you can join the NRA for less than the cost of a box of ammunition for one year. Now the other thing I want to mention to you is that I have signed up myself for a service called Second Call Defense because the first call I'm going to make if I ever have to defend myself with a gun is to the police. The second call I need to make is to an attorney and a legal network and a foundation that can fund my, self, my defense and get between me and the police and all those other things. And that's second call defense. And that's what they do. They provide money for bail bonds to bail you out of jail. They provide money for legal services. They provide a, a, you know, an on-site counselor. They provide counseling afterwards. They'll even clean up your house and they'll try to get your gun back for you. So they do an awful lot of things for a very small fee. I've got a link right here for you to check it out. Please do. I recommend the service because it's endorsed by the National Rifle Association and my experience with it has been stellar. So I encourage you to click on the link and check out Second Call Defense. Now lastly and most importantly as far as I'm concerned please like, subscribe, look for the videos we've done before. They're, they're terrific and we're going to have some good ones coming up. We do about two a week, uh, sometimes three depending on what our schedule is and we'll always try to do more for you. Uh, my son and I thoroughly enjoy doing this. This is our, our hobby, if you will, and uh, we have a great time doing it, even when the chicken gets in the middle <laughs> and interrupts the whole thing. So please, subscribe. There's a button right up here, and uh, keep an eye out for, for videos as they show up later. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week, and be safe.